Hello and welcome to Unfinished Furniture of Wilmington. Today we're going to go through and talk about one of our most frequently asked questions that we've had over the years that we've been in business, and that is, what is Parawood? Well, I've got an example here. Parawood is real wood. I get that question all the time. Is it fake? Is it real? No, it is real. It is a hardwood. It's about as hard as uh, oak and is in the maple family of hardwoods. We get it primarily out of Southeast Asia, although it does grow in Brazil. It is a farm-raised species. Uh, they basically go through and grow it in plantations for the latex that flows underneath the bark. They use this latex in the rubber industry, so sometimes it's nicknamed rubber wood. That being said, is it elastic? No. Will it bounce? No. It is a hard wood. Um, it does have a grain similar to that of an ash. So if you look at it, much like a baseball bat, you can see the striation of the grain. It's not as heavily pronounced as, let's say, a red oak, but it's not a muted texture like what you would see in a cherry, a birch, or a maple. Um, one of the other questions that we wind up getting with wood is, well, I'm not familiar with finishing. Can I just take it right out of the box and start finishing? And what we'll tell you is absolutely positively not. Would you ever get into a car, have a wreck, and then immediately take it to an auto body shop and say, yeah, just throw a panel on and start painting? No. The devil is in the details, and that's what I want to kind of explain to you today is just a little bit of surface prep that goes into uh, para wood as well as most any other woods just so you're confident in whatever you wind up buying from Unfinished Furniture of Wilmington. And now we're gonna go through and we're gonna sand and prep. I've got a piece of tape down up over here. We're gonna do one side, ignore the damage here. I wanted to get a nice big piece of scrap to show everybody. One side that's not sanded and prepped and another side that is. If you're ever hesitant and don't know what to do, best thing you can do is whatever can of product you have, read the directions. It'll tell you what to do with raw wood as well as what to do with finished wood. For this particular project here, we're gonna go through, we're gonna start off. I've already done one pass with 120 grit. I'm gonna follow up with 150, and then by hand, I'm gonna finish up with 180 grit going with the grain, and then we're gonna go through, get all the dust off, and then we're gonna apply our first coat of stain. Good tip, I always like to go through and use a pencil and just put a few marks on the wood, it just ensures that if I can get the pencil off, I know I've sanded properly, okay? So again, I've done the 120. I'm now gonna go ahead and start off with the 150. going to follow up by hand with 180 grit. This is a neat device up over here. It holds on to the random orbital paper and it kind of helps your knuckles. That's why you don't get all knurled. And if you notice, I'm not wearing a dust mask. Um, that's a personal preference issue. Um, there are some species of wood out there that are, that is harmful. If you breathe in the dust, teak sometimes. Uh, purple heart is actually quite dangerous, so please, if you do decide to sand and finish, and if you're ever a little bit hesitant, a mask always goes a long way. So we're finishing this up with 180 grit, and I don't want you to get intimidated by this kind of work. I always try to tell my customers, if you're ever going through, and God forbid you get in a car wreck, you wouldn't want the guy at the auto shop just to go through and put a panel on your car and start painting. So the devil is in the details. It's not too terribly difficult, but I do recommend going through, spending that extra time. It does pay off in the end. You're going to get really good results. So right now I'm just going to get all the sawdust off and I want to show you another little hint here. 
certainly you can use tack cloth if you're going to do this. Some people use a vacuum with an attachment to kind of keep the dust down. Pull this off. One more pass, see if we can get more of it out of here. Okay. Fairly dust free, I don't mind getting any on my hands. Okay. With a large surface area like this, sometimes if you're working and it's really, really hot and you start to sweat, sometimes beads of sweat can get, get down up over here and it'll affect your finish. If you're ever hesitant, go, did I sand well enough? Did I get everything out? As long as you're working with oil base and don't have any issues with it, you can go through and use a little bit of paint thinner. Be mindful, ventilation with this certainly, because it is a combustible. Just get it wet on your rag and just wipe it along the surface. And putting this on kind of simulates putting an oil-based stain on in the fact that you can go through and see the natural color, but more importantly, if there's anything else that kind of sticks out, it'll get magnified by this. Let's say if there's a big scratch, or let's just say if I miss a spot where I put the pencil mark on there, um, it would get magnified by this as opposed to putting a darker stain on and then all of a sudden I'm halfway through my stain and I see a big imperfection where I'd have to stop sand it all down and then start over again so right now the surface looks pretty clean i don't see any surface imperfections so the next step is starting our first coat of stain okay now that we have this surface sanded prepped and ready we wash it down with our paint thinner again doing this when we're working with our oil base today we're going to be working with the gel oil got a very very thick viscosity to this um, so let's go ahead and get started If you're ever working with a large surface area, let's say it's a big dining room table, like a 36 by 72 or 36 by 84, where you've got a lot of surface area, one good tip on this is to go through and break out that paint thinner one more time. And what you want to do is wet the entire surface. This really will help that first coat of stain get on there and take evenly because you're basically conditioning the wood in order to absorb it. Now, conditioner or preconditioner sometimes is used for softer woods like aspen or used for like pine. But for this, we just want to be able to help control that flow evenly. This is a closed grain hardwood, so we don't really have too much of an issue, but basically what you can do is just, and you can see, I'm just trying to get this on air. And all I'm trying to do is coat this surface Thinner is going to help because it's going to go through and keep this from soaking in too quickly, allowing me to get it totally wet. Um, other thing, if you see what's on my hands, gloves, so this is oil based, you get it on you, you will be wearing it. Uh, but these gloves happen to be a nitrile type glove as opposed to a latex. Latex gloves will have powder, will have residue. And more importantly, the latex gloves will get eaten up by any of your uh, oil-based products. So it's a good idea, a nice pair of nitrile gloves. Here we go. And you can kind of see we've got everything coated. Again, this is our first coat that's on here. When you do second and third coats, or even your top coats, there's really no need to go through and put the paint thinner on again. This is just for the first coat, first coat only. Okay, and of course the bigger the surface area, the bigger the applicator. This one's small, so I'm just using a three inch, um, three inch foam brush. Just wiping it on down. Trying to go with the grain. Pull it on over. Terry cloths work well to go through and soak it on up. We do have people that will use even the blue shop towels for smaller surfaces or smaller uh, projects, excuse me. Uh, but these work well. I do not recommend t-shirt material. Um, you know, if you want to donate your husband's old t-shirt, use it for washing a car. But for sanding a piece of furniture, it just it's not good. It just tends to pick up and it tends to smear things around 
the terry cloth tends to work a little bit better. Now, the more I'm wiping it, the more stain is coming off. But the biggest thing on this I want you to gather is the fact that it is consistent. There's no blotchiness. There's no, um, there's no inherent uh, marks on it. It looks nice and it looks even. And that's what the sanding and that's what the prep will go through and achieve for you. Uh, that being said, we sanded with uh, 150, or sorry, 120, 150, then we wound up with our 180. Again, you can go through, apply a second, apply a third coat to get this progressively darker if you want to. Um, we do show in our store blocks of wood that show one coat, two coat, three coat coverage over this species of wood only because it is pr predominantly what we sell here. Para wood is a nice, very, very affordable wood. Again, it's grown in Vietnam, so it's inexpensive because of where it's grown in the world. And also, it's a secondary crop. Again, they use it for the latex that flows underneath the bark, that latex they use in the rubber industry. Again, why they're calling it rubber wood, but it is environmentally friendly. It's a green, renewable resource, and it stains beautifully. Uh, that being said, I now want to go through and move over to my unprepped surface. Uh, again, if you're going to take it out of the box, you're not going to get this kind of results without the preparation involved. I'm going to go through and throw a little bit of stain on this and then show you what you're going to expect if you do zero work. So now we're going to go through and work on the non-prepped, non-sanded, straight out of the box, unfinished side. Again, this is a sample. Ignore the boo-boo up over here. Just going to go through and get some stain on there. I'm trying to be fair, I'm trying to get it on there consistently like I did with the other one. I'm not trying to make it deliberately patchy, but I am trying to go through and work quickly, get it on there just so we can go through and give you a fair comparison between one and the other. These things do come sanded out of the box from the manufacturer, but again, it's sanded nice and smooth, but as it transports, as it's affected by cardboard on the inside, people handling it, you know, with grease and oils on your on your skin, it can get on it, it can contaminate the surface. It's always a good idea, sand and prep. Yes. Okay. Again, using the same type of oops, applicator to go through and get that off. see something right here that you would have missed if you didn't sand it, didn't prep it. Get all this off consistently just so we can go through again do that fair comparison and then I'll point out what I see up over here. Initial reaction, looking at one over the other. This looks a little patchy. This one here looks a little bit consistent, more consistent, more even. Ignore this up over here, but more importantly, it looks like something did rub on this because you can see a line. Now, could that have been coming out of the box? Could have been me putting this on this table? You've got that there. You've got um, a glue mark that's right up over here where they join things together. And you got another little patchy area right up over here, which could have been dry glue. Again, zero prep, kind of blemishes, pock marks, so forth, sanded and prepped. Again, a little bit of preparation goes a long way. You spend a lot of money, you spend a lot of time, a lot of effort. I want you to achieve good results. Now, again, this is oil base. You would go through and let this dry overnight. You can apply a second coat, a third coat, and then you can apply your top coats if you wanted to get it darker. Top coats for your protection. Again, follow the protocol. All else fails, read the directions. Um, Periwood, I don't want you to get scared. There's a lot of horror stories, and I think this is the horror story that you read about online 
I went to Walmart, I bought the cheapest can of uh, finish I could find, I did zero prep, I got this kind of result. I took my time, I sanded, I prepped, I used a good quality product, and I'm getting very, very good results. So again, take your time. We always tell customers whenever you're finishing something, you need time, space, and patience. You could do just about anything. Para wood, I don't want you to get scared. It is a very, very good wood to work with. It's a hard wood, it's a renewable resource, it's inexpensive, and it's everywhere. As a matter of fact, the table that we're working on up over here, we've been beating on this thing since 2009. This is made out of para wood as well. So there's a lot of para wood out on the marketplace. You just don't see it. Um, there's some, again, sometimes it's called rubber wood, but don't ever be scared. Go through, read the directions. If you don't know what you're doing, we're always here to go through and try to consult. We can direct you to some good websites that have some information, uh, good stain manufacturers like this one up over here. Again, I'm not uh, endorsing their product. We do sell a lot of it. You do see it here behind me. It's probably the best stain that's out on the marketplace. But again, time, space, and patience, and you can do just about anything. I want to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can always reach us at customer service at solidwood nc.com and if you like what we've done here and you want to see more of our products it's www.unfinishedfurnitureofwilmington.com thank you